I'm in Navisworks, currently 2016, but all the tools I'm looking at are available in the last several years. I'm not going over anything that's completely new. So this model, as far as I can see, looks like a complete full model. However, it does have some site and some construction elements, including, sorry, including a crane, some trucks, and also some scaffolding. Now, within this model, there's a tool that it's already set up called Timeliner. If I pin this up there. Timeliner allows me to bring in a lot of information, and I can either build it inside the project that I'm currently in, or I can actually import this. So in this case, I look at my data sources, and they're blank. However, if I had something from, say, Microsoft Project, or in uh, Microsoft, uh, sorry, uh, Oracle Primavera, or just a regular CSV file, I can bring in that file and utilize that to manage my actual schedule. So I can say what elements are happening when. So if I scroll up here, you can kind of see the project timeline and what elements and what groupings are laid out. Now, what this actually allows me to do is to set up this view for simulation. Now, when I click on the simulate tool, I have my little, almost like little VCR controls or DVD controls. On the upper left-hand corner of the view, I have the date, and I actually have some cost information. So I'm just going to hit play and let this run. Now, what's going to happen is, based on the color, I'm able to tell what's actually happening. So I can see things in green. Those are the things that are actually being built or constructed. I can see some things in red for demo, some things in yellow for temporary. And I can actually watch the building go through its phase, see what day I'm looking at, what time I'm looking at. And that actually works with all of that information. It's just being set to actually show me sort of a walkthrough or a render. And while this one is a relatively static view, my camera's not rotating all over the place, things aren't changing, I can actually set that up so it, it works within this. And I just run through that whole setup. Just a basic, well, not so much basic, but just a, a simplified version of just running through something that's already there. Now, the nice thing about this is if you do have Navisworks Manage, because everything I've just done that works in Simulate, if you have Manage, one of the cool things I can do is run a clash detection that actually works with that. So when I'm actually creating this, I can actually link this to something else, and I can link that to my timeliner. What that means is, let's say I want to run a clash between different objects that I'm working on. So an example of this for this kind of situation would be I have cranes, and the crane objects that I'm working with actually have a, 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 a void built into them that shows me their range. And I want to make sure that my two cranes can't actually turn and hit into each other, or they're not going to be overlapping the booms. So I can make sure that as those are spinning, you know, as one moves in, one moves out, they're not actually going to hit each other. So the timeliner that you saw this time was mostly focused on literally time. A lot of these objects weren't moving around on the site. But the video I showed you before had a lot of objects actually moving. And I can take into consideration time and movement and run clashes based on that. <coughs> now, big question that comes in, well, how do you actually do any of this? So I'm just going to hop into a little bit simpler file. So just looking at the structural element of the model that we just looked at. Now, inside of this, if I look at the file, I can see that a lot of the objects and content in here are broken up into the different individual levels. Part of that's because they're coming from Revit. Now, and in this case, if I look at my sets, there aren't any yet. That previous file, if I look at the sets there, they had a lot of sets. And if you notice, all of these sets actually are already organized by discipline as well. And there's a reason for that that I'm going to go into in a minute. Now, inside of here, I want to actually create a timeliner. So if I open up my timeliner. I'll pin that down. And what I'd like to actually do is either go to data sources and add a data source. This allows me to connect information from an outside inf uh, data, data set, whether it's, again, Excel, our, uh, Office, Primavera, uh, Project, and say, so, okay, well, the data in this field connects to this data in this field inside of NAMS. And I can create all the tasks that I want to work with here. Now, 
since I'm just going to do this very quickly, I'm going to say I want to either add tasks individually, or I can say, you know what, auto add tasks for every topmost item. So very quickly I can do this. I notice how every single one of my levels, this is the topmost item that I have, now actually has a task associated to it. So if I go and hit simulate, that's it. So li literally that's it. I now have a quick timeliner going through my project that I can then show. Now is this reality? Is this actually tying it to a real project time frame? Not really, no. But if my goal is to actually just show a quick video of my building coming together, that's the easiest and fastest way to go about doing that. Now from here what I can actually start to do is dial this in, make this more realistic. I can move things up and down so that way my level 2 top of scale actually is maybe with level 2. So I can move things to be where I want them to be. If I want that to actually occur earlier, I can grab on this and physically shift this back and forth in terms of time. And one of the things you notice is that I'm looking at my planned dates. I have the ability to say, well, when did the actual thing happen? And if I want to do that, so let's say that's going to be 519, so that actually started early and ended uh, on time. Now I can actually show the planned versus actual. So graphically I can come in here and see them. I can also come in here and edit them. And I can see how things are doing in terms of schedule. Now from this I can actually add more information. So I can put things like cost. But the main thing that I want to look at right now is the attached portion. That's actually how I determine what is going to happen during that time frame. So in this case, when I click on that level, which is essentially my level two top of steel, what's happening is that all of this content here is explicitly attached to that level two top of steel. Now the good thing is all I have to do is set that and I'm done. The problem comes in when changes start to occur. If this says explicit, that means I've told it explicitly that that object now goes there. Now what happens if there's changes? What happens if things actually occur where they're on a different level but they're occurring in that same space? They have a different host or whatever. What you typically will end up doing on real projects where you have things that you know we're going to adjust. You're not just trying to do a one-off presentation. You want to utilize this to help track the actual project flow. You want to make sure that as the project schedule changes, where are you? Where are things supposed to be? There are some construction sites that keep one of these up to date, and they actually set up the angle to match a camera that's on site. So that way they can look outside and see, okay, well this is what I see here. Why is the model saying we should have more work done over in this area than what I can actually see outside? So you're able to use that as a check essentially. Now, in order to make that happen, you end up typically using sets. Now, sets can be selection sets, meaning they're explicit, which in this case is, again, not bad, but if I want to make sure that they update very easily and I don't run into problems because of changes, that's not what I want to use. What I'd want to use is a selection set. And the key about that is I'm looking at things here and I'm doing searches. So in this case, I could be looking for pretty much anything. So if I go there, level, let's see here, building story equals one. And I can tell it to find everything that's on there. And that'll actually run through and find all the content that matches that value. If I change it from there and I say the name equals, say level two. So now that finds everything that's based off of the level two. And I save my search. Now the benefit of this is every single time I click on that search set, it runs that search again. That's the key. It doesn't matter what happens in this model. If I get an update of this from the architect, the engineer, my subs, it's still going to run that search and find every single thing that meets my requirements or whatever data I'm looking for. So when I'm actually doing a timeliner and I want to make sure that my information actually works, 
I just assign, oops, let me get that to go away. There we go. Rather than saying explicit selection, I attach that search set. So now every single time I run this, it looks for the content that meets that search set and then shows that data in the animation. So that ensures that the information is always up to date. So if I say refresh and it reloads my background information, it looks to see if there's any changes in the, uh, the host file that I'm working with, which could be AutoCAD, MicroStation, Revit, SketchUp, you know, wherever it's coming from. It'll run through that. And I can make the search sets as simple as, you know, find me everything on this level or as complicated as I'm only looking for things that are between the third floor and the fifth floor that are mechanical in nature and that are, are on the hot water system. I can be very, very specific about that. That's one of the main benefits or powers of Navisworks is how uh, uh, detailed you can get in how you look for things. <coughs> now, in terms of how this actually looks, when I ran the simulator before, you noticed how a lot of things in here were coming in as green. Now, that color is something that you can change. So if you have people on the project that might be uh, uh, red-green colorblind, or you want to be a little bit more specific about certain things, I can completely uh, sorry, I can completely uh, manage that. So in this case, if it's being constructed, it's green, demolished, it's red, and temporary is yellow. But you can create more of those. So I can add new task types. I can add whatever colors I want. And I can also modify not just the start and the end, but I can tell it to look a specific way if it's early or late. So if remember when I was looking at my tasks, I could say not just when the, it was planned to start or planned to end. I can say, well, when did something actually start? Not a lot of people take advantage of that, but it's something else that you can add to, especially if you're actually coordinating this with a, a real outside data source. So if you are using something like Primavera where you're tracking every little piece and you're making sure, okay, when does this happen? When was it supposed to happen? That takes the effort out of doing it in here. So I can just sort of synchronize it with that. So I can configure my appearance, go to simulate, tell it to run. And you notice over here, all I really have is the date. But when I was in that other project, I had a lot of information that was showing up in the upper left-hand corner. I had cost. I had cost of individual components or parts. So what I have to do to get that to show up is just modify my settings. So if I hop over here and just click on the settings button, I can tell it, well, when do I want to see this video? Or when do I want the video to be built on? So let's say you have a two-year project. You know, we're already eight months into it. I don't necessarily need to see what happened on the first eight months. I need to see where we are. I can tell it, okay, well, when do I want to start the simulation? And when do I want to end it? I can modify the interval size, meaning do I want to see this as a percentage of my project? Do I want to see this for every day? Do I want to see this based in hours? I can modify the length of the video, so how long do I want this to be? And for what I was just talking about, I can modify my overlay text. So what's the date, the time, uh, what color do I want these to show up in? What extra information do I want to put in there in terms of number of days or currently active tasks? So I can put a lot of information into this. And again, I can tell it, do I want to see planned? Do I want to see the differences or actual? So I can manage which portion of this I'd like to see. And if I want to see it in Revit, or sorry, inside of Navisworks, I just hit play. If this is something I'd like to sort of export out, I just say export animation. And I give it the formatting that I wanted to actually take for that export. Now, in terms of the updates, I mentioned before how all I'd need to do was say refresh. So a question came in regarding the manager would have to save over the sub's last file in order to get that. Uh, yes and no. So either thing that you would end up doing, so if you pull this out a little bit, you can see that the file that I'm working for is the hospital structural. What I would want to end up doing is overwriting that. So inside my project folder, I would just lay the new one on top of that. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. A lot of the times when people submit files, they'll maybe append the date. I might download that file, put it in a project file, and then make a copy of that without the number, and then put it into the actual project directory. So this is uh, 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 much easier to work with. And also, so the software just refreshes as opposed to starts looking for different information. 